Om Namah Shivaya students. Today we are going to start off with a new prose from your English literature textbook Honeydew. It is, This is Jody's Fawn by Marjorie Kinnan Rawlings. Rawlings was an American author who lived in rural Florida and wrote novels describing the richly detailed natural settings of the Florida backcountry and the hard-scrabbled lives of those who settled in it. Her best-known work, The Yearling, was about a boy who adopts an orphan fawn, and it won a Pulitzer Prize for fiction in 1939. The movie version of The Yearling came out in 1946 and starred iconic actor Gregory Peck and Jane Wyman, who both were nominated for Academy Awards. Rawlings, before finding success with her novels, submitted many of her short stories about the local and colourful natives of Cross Creek to Scribner's publishing house. It was through her association with Scribner's that she became the protege of legendary editor Maxwell Perkins. This relationship brought her into the company of a literary elite which included fellow writers Ernest Hemingway, Thomas Wolfe, F. Scott Fitzgerald, Robert Frost and Margaret Michel. It was Perkins who suggested that she write a book in the vein of Mark Twain's Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, one that would appeal to both a child and adult audience. The story's coming-of-age theme tells of a young boy, Jody Baxter, and his relationship to an orphan fawn that he befriends. The story's subplot is about the family's struggle for survival in the Florida wilderness in the late 1800. Jody's relationship with his father is severely tested when he is ordered to kill the fawn that is eating the family's crops. The story's protagonist, Jody, a yearling himself, enters adulthood by coming to terms with loss and hardship. William Soskin, in a New York Herald Tribune book review, said of the story, The yearling is an education in life that is far removed from our dreary urban formulas. The story of a boy and an animal becomes one of the most exquisite I have ever read. The novel, which won the Pulitzer in 1938, quickly went on to become a classic, and in 1939, a beautifully illustrated edition was produced with original artwork done by famed illustrator N.C. Wyeth. The book remained on the bestseller list for 93 weeks and sold over 2,40,000 copies in its first year. The same year, she was elected into the National Academy of Arts and Letters. Her non-fiction autobiographical book, Cross Creek, was published in 1942. Gordon E. Bylow in Frontier Eden summed up the anecdotal and homespun narrative by saying, Through her tales, the author reveals herself, her philosophy of life, and her mystical feeling for the land and nature. It was almost a decade before her next novel, The Sojourner, would be published. The novel was set in the Northeast instead of her familiar Florida setting, but dealt with familiar themes of loneliness, alienation and time. The Sojourner was published in January 1953 and Rawlings died in December 1953. This is Jody's Fawn is a very touching story that tells us about a little child and his consciousness. It revolves around the emotions of Jody and his pure heart. When a snake bites Jody's father, he kills a doe to save him. He uses the heart and liver for drawing out the poison. However, the loss of that doe and thoughts about the fawn do not leave his mind. He thinks about it a lot and feels that abandoning him in the woods was not right. So he convinces his family to let him raise the fawn. He even goes to the extent of saying that he will feed him his own share of milk. 
Everyone finally agrees and he goes to the forest to find the fawn. On searching, he finally finds it and brings it home. Now the fawn is safe and is being fed by Jody happily. The story is an extract that has been taken from the popular fiction The Yearling written by Marjorie Kinnan Rawley. It deals with a little kid Jody and his emotions. He has a very sensitive mind which makes him have a pure heart as well. The story is a great lesson that teaches us about human consciousness and how sensitive little children with their pure hearts and loving nature. I'm ending the class over here today. Thank you students. Om Namah Shivaya.